Hi guys, it's Rach. Today we are going to be book chatting and I'm going to start off with some recommendations from you guys. So I was recommended The Opportunist by Taryn Fisher or that series. I was actually recommended just her in general. I was told that by one of you guys that it probably wasn't my usual thing but she was an amazing writer and I just had to read her books. So I downloaded The Opportunist a little while ago and it's just kind of sat there on my Kindle and I finally got around to reading it and then of course once I read that one I had to read the other two books in this series because I just got completely sucked in and you guys were completely right. This is a different type of storyline to what I would usually go for. It is a romance novel in a way but it's not your typical romance novel. These characters are very flawed. They aren't perfect and they do some things that would be usually considered I guess wrong or just not like almost bad in a way that even like the good characters do bad things which is a really interesting I don't know take on this kind of storyline because while it is a love story it isn't your typical love story and it's one of those books where you, you jump back and forth in time. The whole series spans over like 10 years and you really get sucked into these characters and it, it's deep and it's dirty and it's gritty but it also it ends in a way that, that you enjoy. So there's this book, The Opportunist, there's also the second book in the series which is Dirty Red and this book is written from the perspective of the female antagonist is that the, the term basically the female bad character in this book the whole second story is like written from her and you would think why would you write a book where in the previous book you have spent most of the book making this girl out to be a baddie and somebody that you hate and then all of a sudden you're writing an entire book from her perspective but you do sort of get drawn in and you go from almost feeling sorry for her to still hating her and in the end of this book I think I still hated her the character's name's Leah but it was a necessary part of this whole story so that's the second book and then the third book Thief is written from the perspective of the male protagonist and even the guy who throughout the, the book has been Again, he's not just a knight in shining armor kind of character. He does things that are a bit wrong and a bit bad too. And I guess that's the realness element to this series. It, it's, it is about a guy and a girl who kind of have this tumultuous start and they, they meet in college and they fall in love but she has her own issues and he has his own issues in the past and there's just forces working against them to break them apart and then it's kind of about them going back and forth and one wanting one at one time and then the other wanting the other at the other time and just never quite getting together. I will say that it does end in a way that is is satisfying. It is still not this perfect happily ever after but you do get the characters that you want together together if that makes sense. So I wasn't at all angry at the end of this book thinking oh my goodness I, I don't know why I bothered reading these books. I hated the way it ended. Not like that at all but it isn't this picture perfect ending and there's almost this struggle. At some points I got to the point where I was thinking okay it's almost lost its realism because so many things just went wrong. Like, it's like how can you you lose so much time in a relationship just from from one little thing going wrong or one misunderstanding. But I would thoroughly recommend this series. It's the Love Me With Lies series by Taryn Fisher. Give it a go. It is something different at least for, from what the books that I kind of usually read. The next book I wanted to talk about is You Were Mine by Abby Glanz. I just finished this book today. It only came out yesterday. Obviously it will have been out for a little while by the time this video goes up but I, I, I read it in, in a day and a little bit. I really really enjoyed it. This is Trip and Bethy's story. It's part of the Rosemary Beach series which I have been recommending for a very long time. If you haven't read any of the books stop listening to me because this will probably be a bit of a spoiler. Go back, read it from the start. I would highly recommend it but Trip, Trip and Bethy's story is one that's been building for a little while and I know that some people who are almost a little bit apprehensive about this book because for a whole lot of this series Bethy was with Jace who was another character in this series and then he I if you haven't read if you're not up to date stop watching because otherwise this will be a spoiler have you stopped good then he died and it was just I don't know it was a shock and you didn't think it was going to happen and it was sad in a way but at the same time 
I don't know, the story just kept on going. And I thought this was a good, well-timed book because it wasn't right after he died. It wasn't right after that couple had split up. So you had a little bit of time to get used to it and you also had a little bit of time to build by the fact that Trip and Bethy had actually had a story well before her um, story with Jace. So this is one of these books where uh, the characters met and fell in love when they were young and then the guy went off, had to leave for a number of reasons and she kind of moved on and now he's back and she has feelings again for him and he wants her back and it's about them getting together and dealing with past hurts and dealing with everything that's happened in the eight years since they've been apart the first time and of course you still get to hear about all the other characters and how their story progresses and I just I love all the characters in the whole Rosemary Beach series. Another series that I've been reading for a little while is the Crossfire novels by Sylvia Day. This is a series, it's an adult romance series, and it's been going on for a little while now, and I think, I'm pretty sure from memory, this was one of these series that was, wasn't supposed to be as long as it is, and it was extended, and you can kind of tell that the author has changed track and decided to add more books, because I know, I think from the last, when I read the last one, I felt like it was a little bit of an unnecessary book, like not a lot happened, even though like it was a full long book. This one I enjoyed more. It definitely progressed the series of, um, progressed, progressed the story of Eva and Gideon, the, the um, main characters in this book. This one is about both a guy and a girl who were dealing with issues there. They had, um, were abused in the past, so for, in, in different ways, so they both have um, I guess issues with relationships and and physical the physicality of relationships things like that. It, it's one of those ones that I started reading the series. I got sucked in. It wasn't perfect, but I decided to keep on reading the story. And once you you start, you kind of can't stop. If that makes sense. I did enjoy this book overall. I, I'm kind of waiting for this series to wrap up because, like I said, I feel like there's a lot of loose ends and things that have just been added on to the series that that needs to kind of progress and then and, and wrap up. But overall, it was it was a nice addition to this series. And if you do like adult romance novels, then then it might be worth checking out, particularly if you've read other Sylvia Day books before. What else have I read? Oh, Maybe Not by Colleen Hoover. This one is a novella, a spin-off kind of from Maybe Someday and it's uh, characters that you, you met in Maybe Someday that were sort of secondary characters and it's about them getting together. This one was a little bit, you could tell it was short in a novella and it was, it was quite almost fast paced in a way. It was a little bit superficial I felt given how sort of deep a lot of Colleen Hoover's books are but I didn't mind this sort of light-hearted look and the more I read it the more I enjoyed it. It's it's about a guy and a girl who become roommates and they kind of on the outwards hate each other but there's a lot of sexual chemistry and, and they kind of get together and it, it's a, almost a friends with benefits kind of relationship until he wants more and it's about him convincing her that that they can have more and about um, there's like jealousy and, and it's just it's fun they kind of their fighting is hilarious because you kind of can see that they just they just need to get their shit together and get together but it was a nice little addition to that series I don't know if there's going to be more of the like if there's going to be a next book after maybe someday I, I'm not 100% sure but I really enjoyed the original book and I liked this novella. Speaking of editions, this is Yours for Christmas which is the novella of the Fool's Gold series. It's kind of a spin-off from the last sort of three books that we've had from the Fool's Gold series. Again, this is a story that's been building. It's a, a, a widow. She has a young daughter. She is alone and is kind of is attracted to one of the football players that has recently moved to Fool's Gold and is um, working in a P or doing PR there and he has kind of been anti-relationships he was burned in the past and uh, doesn't sort of want to get into anything too deep but especially not with a single mother because in the past he thought he was the father of a child and then had that child taken away from him but he is already sort of falling for her and falling for her daughter and it's just about them getting together it's a cute easy read it is set at Christmas time which is always great for this time of year and I was happy to see them get together because you could kind of tell that there may have been something building in the past three books so I'm happy that he got his story and he's happy happy ending and same for her because she's been a character for a little while now and I think it's always nice when when they get their little their little um 
perfect love, which they seem to always find in Fool's Gold. Something a little bit more deep, definitely a lot more deep, is Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. And it's a sign of love novel, but it is a standalone book. And this is a, is quite a, I guess it's, it's a deep book, it's a dark book, but there's also that, there's that romance element to it. And it's about this guy who was part of a terrible accident as a child. And he grew up with parents who also were from an ill-fated kind of love story. And this, the whole town basically has deserted this young boy. He grew up with his uncle who was a little bit crazy and just a little bit weird and didn't like was one of these kind of loner people that was a little bit separated from the community so he kept this boy separated from the community and he's grown up and part of that from that accident was that he can't speak and then we have this girl who's come to town she's kind of running away from a bad experience herself and is looking for a, a bit of a fresh start and she meets this guy and and sees the potential in him, sees him for who he is and not what the rest of the town sees him as and she I guess relates to him because she has past hurts as well and they get together and sort of form a friendship and then eventually fall in love and it's about him discovering love for the first time and discovering intimacy and it's about her sort of finding the way to trust people again and, and finding her own happiness, her own, own peace and it is it is deep because, like I said, there is the flashbacks to the past where you hear the, the tragic story of this boy and his parents and also her past as well and it's about him finding his voice basically even though that he can't speak. So I think it was really well written. I really enjoyed the story. I read it, I got into it really easily and I would recommend it. I'm going to have to look up some of these other um, stories because this one is based like loosely, loosely on the story of Sagittarius, like the star sign. Sagittarius or where that story comes from and I believe there are others in the series about the other star signs as well so very interesting concept I thought. Last couple of books that I want to mention Finding Us which is part of the Jade series by Ali Everhart I believe yeah Ali Everhart I've mentioned this series before this has been going on for quite a while now it is a young adult or not young adult, new adult romance series. This might be, it's either book four or book five in this series. Might be book five, I think. And there is this whole kind of mystery element on the side of it because um, the guy is from a rich family who makes up the part of this almost like this secret society of people who have a lot of money and power basically in America and can rig elections and hide things and manipulate the media and all this kind of stuff. So there's that kind of element to it on top of just your typical kind of new adult romance story about a guy and a girl in college. They get married young and this is just a continuation of their story. It's probably not the, the best books that I've ever read but it's a story that definitely keeps me intrigued and that I want to keep on reading the story now that I've started. Oh wait, I like this is book six. So I've read all six books. We're We've been going and I believe there's still going to be more. It's quite a decent sized series for a, like a set of books that concentrate on one couple. Like it's not, each book is in a different couple. It's all Jade and Garrett the whole way along. I read the third book in the Gentry Boys series. This is Game by Cora Brent. I mentioned the previous two books in um, previous book chats before. This one is about a, like there's three brothers who all come from sort of a bad past. They grew up in a in a dodgy town with an abusive father and they've kind of gotten out and it's about them sort of finding their true love. I feel like I'd explain the, the, each of these books the exact same way. This is the third brother, the kind of youngest brother, even though they're triplets so it's not really the youngest, but um, he's obviously been a part of the, the past three books and he's falling in love with a girl or falling for a girl that's in his class because he's at college and they are kind of thrown together anyway because she is the roommate of his brother's fiance so they're, they're getting pushed together but she's definitely hesitant about their relationship and it's about them kind of dealing with her past and his past and getting together and they're just good bad boy kind of books i've like I said, I mentioned it before, easy reads. The last book I have to talk about is Tall, Silent and Lethal, which is a Pite and Sentinel novel by R.L. Mathewson. This series I've read over a period of time. They're quite long books and there's been a decent sized gap between, I think there might have been like three maybe already. This might be the fourth book in this series. 
it is an adult romance series that has an element of supernatural to it. Um, it's kind of like vampire-esque, but they're not vampires, or there are vampires in it as well, but there are these things called pites and sentinels, and you kind of need to read all of them to... Um, to read this one because it's definitely a continuation it kind of explains the whole backstory as to what these creatures are but if you do enjoy a, like a romance novel with it that kind of element to it that supernatural natural element i think you will enjoy this series it, it's pretty out there but i i have enjoyed the the writing and i enjoy the stories that rl matheson creates and i just think it's really good i also really like her Neighbour from Hell series, would highly recommend that as well, but I really, really enjoy um, this series for a, for a supernatural, because I don't I haven't read a lot of supernatural kind of style books lately. If you have any recommendations, let me know. So that is everything that I have to talk about today in this book chat. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you read any of the books, let me know what you think. If you had the same opinion as me, different opinions, did you like it, did you not? Any recommendations, send them my way. And as always, I will have my Goodreads linked in the description box below. Check that out. Come befriend me. I'd love to be able to chat books with you guys. You can also see what I'm reading as I'm reading it and what ratings I give it and things like that. And you can send me book recommendations over Goodreads as well. So that's it from me. I'll talk to you guys all next time. Bye!